Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Baby, how can we teach our children meditation? Yeah, make sure your mic is on. So, what was the question? How can you teach your children meditation? Yeah, first make sure that you're an expert in meditation. Don't think this is a children's course, this is for you a course. This is above and the most advanced courses of Islam. It's not what you see from yoga centers. This is a, the most advanced understandings of Islam is tafakkur. After they studied all their sharia, studied all their fiqr, at the end the shaykh would assign them to reach to the shaykhs of dhawq and taste. And the shaykhs of taste would then take you to perfect you. The moon raises you and the sun sweetens you. So this is the last phase where the sun sweetens you because they have a very strong Muhammadan light to perfect people. It's not so much a course for children, it's more important that the adult becomes the master of tafakkur, the light that they bring in, the guidance and understanding that they bring in within their heart will illuminate the entire house of lights, will bring protection, will bring knowledges, realities and will bring all of the characteristics that are important for Sayyidina Muhammad within the home. That's natural, once the person is, is an expert in the tafakkur that they continuously practice it, just by means of then sitting with their children, the children will observe how they sit and how they close their eyes, how they listen to the salawats and they'll do as you do, not do as you say. So our way is based on doing, not saying inshaAllah. Sayyidi, how to deepen, intensify love with the shaykh to accelerate spiritual growth? To, to take the teachings, to have good characteristics, to not have doubt that <coughs> continuously trying to figure out or doubt that I'm with the shaykh, I'm with the right shaykh, I should be with another shaykh and then keep thinking every time you have a dream of a, of a different shaykh, does it mean this or does it mean that? All of them are Muhammadan representatives if they are these true shaykhs. And the understanding that one has to have is, I have to be perfecting myself and every time uh, isharat or guidance or something comes from a shaykh, is it to perfect myself and notify me that I'm off course and that's all I have to worry about. Don't look to the station and the maqam of the shaykh and is this the highest shaykh, is this like this, you're, you're doing the wrong tafakkur, you're trying to figure out the station of the shaykh and that when we talked about the mirror, you have to worry about your grave. And did you complete what you needed to complete? Are you perfecting yourself to the best of your ability? If you are perfecting yourself, doing the best that you can, then you are making Prophet happy. And that's what you have to focus. Forget about all these the shaykh's names and who the shaykhs and this shaykh and that shaykh. Are you making Sayyidina Muhammad happy? Are you following the way of Prophet happy? Are you accountable for the time you have? Are you heedless with your time? Are you, are you taking Prophet's way with a, with a, like a, a reverence? Whatever Sayyidina Muhammad brought, we put it like on a, on a royal pillow and we carry it with the ihtiram that he brought for us a holy turban. We wear the turban as if it's the crown of paradise. Not something small, it ma multiplies your salah by 27 times and be granted the maqam of the martyr, of 70 martyrs. The ajr and the reward of somebody who wears a holy turban, well as if he had the reward of 70 martyrs because he is muhi al-sunnah, he is one whom is reviving the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad upon this earth. 
and every salah he makes is 27 times his salah. So if you were worried about your qada and made up salah, if you followed the shaykhs you'd have nothing to worry about because every salah counted 27 times, right? If you followed the shaykhs and saw that, oh they look as they use a siwak and they never do anything without their siwak and they multiplied their salah by 27 times. And they got the, the ajr and reward of 70 martyrs because why? They're muhiya sunnah. Why? Because they keep a reverence. The Prophet brought this. We don't compare this to crest and toothpaste. This has nothing to do with toothpaste. This has nothing to do with brightening your teeth unless you're planning on eating people. This has to do with the key to your heart. When you nifaqi fi qalbi wa shirki khafi. That don't let hypocrisy enter my heart and don't let me to fall into hidden shirk and judging Allah's creation. They were keys and ihtiram and love and respect for Sayyidina Muhammad Am I making Prophet happy? You know they don't break their Ramadan unless they're dying. And if they're very sick they cry the whole time that Allah give them a health to pray and to keep their Ramadan. They don't feel like they have a headache and they don't do Ramadan that day. Every day that you intentionally miss in your fasting is a $600 penalty for every day. Or feed 60 people, not 60 people, yeah you have to feed how much was 60 people per day or fast 60 consecutive days for every day. Misha by 30, 100, 1800 consecutive months or was it? it? You have to fast two months for every day that you miss. So in 30 days you have to fast 60 consecutive months for one day. It's not something small but it means that this love is all from love. Nobody can force anyone to do anything. Nobody's even watching. It's what we do is from love. Are you thankful with Allah Then we try to do what we do. Are you thankful with Rasulul Kareem that Sayyidina Muhammad I know personally from myself, Prophet nazar in love is dressing and blessing. And that love gives me the sweetness of my deen. No doubt I want to make Prophet happy with me in Allah's presence. For the reverse, if I start to do bad, the shame I would feel that Sayyidina Muhammad has to go to Allah's presence and ask my forgiveness because Prophet loves me. I know he loves me. When I know that he loves me, he has to ask Allah please Ya Rabbi don't punish him, don't punish her. So why I want to put them in that type of position? I want it to be the other way where he keeps asking Ya Rabbi can you bless him more because they're doing this, can you give him more because they're doing this. We try to stay out of the dirty water in our life and enter only into oceans of goodness and khayr in which everything we're doing is we're hoping Prophet be happy with it and present it to Allah Imagine a gift coming from, Allah, from Prophet to Allah where he hears from Prophet something good from you. This is then, this is, this is the, the cream of our existence. That if Sayyidina Muhammad is happy with this, inshaAllah. Sayyidi, <coughs> one starts seeing insects and creatures in real time or in photos, is that related to fear? Seeing them? In real time or in photos? Just seeing, seeing insects, creatures? Yeah, if it's from the tafakkur or from their spiritual vision. Yeah, it's just spiritual vision. There are many of these creatures and energies everywhere. Our world is, imagine all the bugs and creatures we see in our physical eyes. The spiritual world of the jinn is ten times more than that. Ten times the amount of spiders, Ten times the amount of, uh, of ants, ten times the amount of snakes, ten times the amount of, of personalities and beings. If spiritual vision opens for certain people, they may 
sense certain energies and certain beings around and don't focus on that, just focus on your tafakkur, your contemplation. Think of the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and how to reach that reality, how to do your salawats at Ruza Sharif and keep yourself in the presence of Ruza Sharif in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. Can you speak on angelic realities of food? The food has an immense reality that everything we are doing is unlocking the power within the food and water. That every tajalli that coming for insan and the shaykhs and all the associations, they put all the tajallis of whatever they're doing upon the water and the food because the hearts of, of men are not capable of absorbing that reality. Where we pray we keep water and food and in our homes where we make zikr we keep water and food. They understood that every association, every zikr, every salah, every action that you're doing is dress is most powerful upon water and food. That the malaika inside the water and the food, they're the ones saying ameen at the level of angelic purity. So as soon as we make our salah, we make our zikr, we make our du'as, when we're making the du'a, the angel and angels in the water, the tea, the food, we have an entire store place of food. Every angel upon them is saying ameen, 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 not at our level. But at an angelic level, what reality that carries is unimaginable. On top of that whatever du'a the shaykh is pushing through, again you know, light upon light, light upon light, light upon light of realities. Then from understanding of Sayyidina Muhammad that every bite of a generous person's food 300 angels enter into that insan to begin to make a shifa and a healing for them. And on top of that if one of those generous people are from Abdul Qadir, that they are Qadiri people of Laylatul Qadr, everything they do is multiplied by 30,000. Because Allah says, we grant them salamun hiya hatta mitna al-fajr, they granted 30,000, 1,000 months in every day which is by 30, 30 days times 1,000 months. Every day of theirs Allah is blessing them 30,000 times more than anyone else. So if one of those Qadri people making du'a, their food is blessed 30,000 times more, their water dressed 30,000 times more, if their salah 30,000 times more barakah, their zikr 30,000 times more barakah. On top of that Sayyidina because <laughs> it keeps going, then Sayyidina Muhammad sweetened the deal, said, oh if Allah giving that then let me tell you what Allah gave me to give to that servant. If they do one hour of tafakkur, that is accepted and they become Ahli Tafakkur and the people of that reality, every hour of theirs is like somebody else's 70 years of worship. One hour with them is as if you find somebody for 70 years has to worship if you spend just one hour with them. One hour times 70 years we said was like 1500 years one day with them. Because these Ahlul Tafakkur, they're continuous live Tafakkur. When they've been granted the station of Tafakkur, their connection is live all the time. They're streaming all the time. They shut off for people but their heart is alive and awake. And they're streaming 24 hours a day. So it means their day is the equivalent of 1500 years of worship. If you spent one day with them is as, as if you spent 1500 years with somebody else. So knowing one of them has a tremendous amount of light and blessings and dressings. 
So imagine then the angels in their food, the angels in their water, how much Allah is sending. That's why some men their amal are like mountains. Not because they're jogging you know 50 hours a day, it's because Allah dressing and dressing and dressing and blessing and that's Allah's ni'mat and blessing upon their soul. It's not uh, something that uh, just is coming from zakah, it's coming from Allah's ni'mat. Allah inspired them to be from these people of tafakkur, Allah inspired them to reach to that reality and as a result they are like abundant fountains of Allah's grace and rahmah upon the earth. And by means of that everything is kept green, by means of that everything is revived, by means of that there are muhi al qulub. Any heart that comes dead around them, through them, through their signal, Allah will revive it and bring it back to life. If Sayyidina Khidr used his power on a dead fish, Imagine through the shajara of the Naqshbandi silsila what he's sending into the hearts of these shaykhs. What Allah cares for a fish to come back to life. Allah care for the heart of, of insan that bring their heart back to life. So we said the night before they destroy mahiya dunub from just the mimha of Sayyidina Muhammad they crush all of the rust and the badness that is around that insan, that same light that comes and burns away everything, returns it as new. And SubhanAllah Allah now has that technology for lasers for insan to see. So they bring this really old and rusty dirty uh, piece of metal and they have a new laser and they bring this laser and they're hitting this metal and it's going <coughs> look like it's burning it. And with a laser light they take away all the rust and this device becomes as if brand new. The laser light is at such a frequency that it's burning through all of the rust and returns that piece of metal as if it's brand new and then they show you brand new. And they use this in industrial cleaning now with this laser light. This for Allah to show insan, well you people think you can make it, you don't think Allah has it? Allah has servants through their eyes, they merely look more powerful than that laser light and it burns away everything. They have laser light now where they can detect a sickness within your body cell. They inject a dye that attaches to that sickness for example and makes that sickness to have a blue color. Then they make a laser that goes through your skin and only targets the blue color. And from outside they shine a light, it goes in and begin to attack everything that's blue. So that if they diagnose the problem, attach a color to the problem and then have a receiving light that identifies only wants to burn blue. Goes through your skin, no problem. Goes through your blood, no problem. It finds that infected cell that's blue and start to burn it, burn it, burn it and clean. All these technologies Allah is just showing, Toshiba made it. You don't think Allah's heavens has it? Of course. These are the eyes of the believer. Their eyes and their soul, their light merely moves where Allah wants it to move. It can clean, it can cleanse, it can heal, it can everything. But we have to build ourselves for that reality and to dress ourselves from that reality inshaAllah. Maybe sometimes when I meditate I feel a breeze, is there a reason for that? Also should meditation be done in darkness? <clears throat> yeah, each has its reality, so don't want to say yes or no. The breeze. When you know that the environment is closed off, most definitely awliyaullah will be present, spiritual beings will be present. You may smell a, a good fragrance of rose and amber, sandalwood, known fragrances for holy souls of angels, mu'min, jinn, awliyaullah. Those are all beatific and those are to encourage the servant to continue. These are the khashf and the hal, that when the servant is struggling with themselves, lowering bad desires and trying to improve themselves, Allah gives reward. 
the hush is that when they sit, Allah may give a glimpse of something beautific. Somebody emailed, oh I was feeling beautific things, it went away, have I done something wrong? You know best if you did something wrong but in reality even if you don't do anything wrong, Allah will close the tap. It's not meant to worship when everything's beautiful. Allah sends and closes and wants to see that when I close, do you struggle harder? Or do you only respond to when everything is great? Then we gave the examples, like you come home and your kids, they only kiss you if you give them five dollars. Hi Baba, here you give five dollars. Hi Baba, here's five dollars. Hi Baba, hi five. And if the day you come, you don't give the five dollars, uh, what the heck Baba, who cares about that? He came home today. Allah doesn't want that relationship where He's encouraging only that He give you a tip and you, you do good. That reward came as a gift from Allah He said, Ya Rabbi shukr, shukr, shukr that you make me to have more yaqeen and when things are not coming you worship even harder to take yourself to the next level in which Allah will be pleased with you. And then Allah again can send His reward. The hal, same, the feeling. You get into the zikr, you enter association, you feel what's transpiring and fight through the badness and bad character. Maybe a very, very holy night and shaitan wants to destroy it and to make you to be angry and angered so that you don't receive the tajallis. But the rijal they understood that those are the nights they have to fiercely fight to keep their connection and not worry about a reward. The reward comes from Allah it can come through the back end or can come through the, the, the association. You may not feel it in the association, later you go home and you feel whatever Allah wants you to feel or sends you something beautific. But we don't struggle and strive for those realities, we struggle to make Allah happy. Ilahi anta maqsoodi wa ridat matloob. Our zikr this whole way, Ilahi anta maqsoodi wa ridat matloob. I beg your forgiveness and seek your satisfaction with me Ya Rabbi. And same for Prophet that we're begging Prophet forgiveness and that we seek his satisfaction. I'm not here to, to feel this and to see that. It would be nice if you felt some pity for me so that I could feel it but it's okay if you don't want to and then you don't seek it, don't seek it. That which you put in your heart, when you know your communication is very strong with them, if you put something in your heart you're guaranteeing yourself to have that closed. You just gave them a, a big test. It's like going into your class in math, say, I don't know multiplication, I don't know plus and minus and then sit down on your table. What did you just tell the teacher? He doesn't know multiplication and plus and minus. What do you think is going to be on your test? Multiplication plus and minus. You just gave yourself a very hard test. So that's why our, our way was based on silence and spiritual silence that, oh I want to see, I want to see this, I want to see that, I want to see that, you're guaranteeing it's not going to come. Because now they say, let's test him in sabr. Because he's asking for it, keep it away. So they don't ask anything. Now they say, don't expect anything, you'll be happy with everything. Take all expectation out of the heart. Ya Rabbi, I'm not expecting anything, I'm a zalim and oppressor to myself. And I do my worshipness as good worshipness. If Allah wants to send, alhamdulillah. But if I keep saying there and say, oh I want to see it, I want to see it, I want to see it, you'll be like this a hundred years. Because as much as you're saying the zikr, I want to see it, as much as it's going farther and farther and farther away. So you're putting your, your test out there. That's why I said, don't say things, ah I can't stand when this happened. As soon as you say it, write it or even speak it from your heart, know that it's now the next test on your exam. That's why we stay quiet and when we talk to people we say, oh don't say that, that's, that's going to come really hard. Oh, I can't stand when it's like this, I get so hungry. Oh and the next day everything happens. And that's exactly the condition Allah will put the person in. That's why in this way the microphone is live. They are listening, they are observing because you're trying to get that live connection, it's going both ways. That's why when they have an interview, you're saying, oh I'm going to get the interview, they're going to be on television. But many people forget that the, the mic was live, the camera cut off but they're still talking. And all of a sudden it's called the hot mic where the, the, they put on television all these crazy things the person was saying. Same with spirituality, even more so. 
The mic is live with Prophet with awliyaullah, with angels, with the heavens. Yeah, everything you say you don't like, it'll be on your next test. Everything that you're asking that you want to have, you want to have, it'll be on the test and be farther away from the servant. The true servanthood is one who wants nothing, desires nothing, put into their heart nothing, nothing, nothing and, Ya Rabbi I'll be happy with whatever you choose for me. Then Allah can surprise you with a gift. Now take that back to your home and you have a certain gift you want to give to your kids and your, gift, your kid comes and says, Ya I need this new you know super huge computer. But you were hoping just to bring a box of candy to make them happy. Now between you and them there's a big problem because whatever I give they just set the standards so high they would never be happy. So better not to give it. And why did you set a standard in that relationship like that? So it happens all the time in our daily life, why do it with Allah So if, if the child comes, I want nothing Baba, I'm happy, I love you, I want nothing, I want nothing. Anything you bring to them they're happy and then you got happy that they're happy. So you continuously do it. That's the concept of not asking and not wanting anything. Everything you ask for it makes you to have a distance with Allah Sayyidi what, are the, Sayyidi, what are the protocols to follow before zikr or meditation or the things we should do or avoid? InshaAllah before the meditation or for the zikr? The meditation you could do at any time but for both meditation and zikr is to keep your stomach empty. Try not to have big meals and then sit and think oh, you want to meditate, you're just going to, you're not even going to levitate, you're just going to sleep. Because the body is, is now all its energy is just to consume the food and the servant has to disattach the soul from the body. If there's no food in the stomach then the tank is empty. When the tank is empty the soul is free to move and the body is not needing that energy to survive and to digest. So always in, in, in the salah, in the zikr, in the, in the practices keep your stomach empty. That's why many people would come and be very upset that why do we eat so late? Well because they didn't understand anything from zikr so they want to eat big meal and go and have zikr. You lost the whole purpose of that zikr. You just sat there and ate a meal and just uh, I don't know what you did by doing that zikr. But those who want to experience the reality of the zikr they keep their tank empty. As soon as they keep empty their soul is able to feel and become subtle with the energies of the zikr. They also kept the system of not wearing your work clothes with your spiritual time. Don't go from work and sit into the zikr with your work clothes. Keep a set of clothes that are completely separate not from the energy of work and that they're meant for being in Allah's presence not in your boss's presence. So separate your dunya and your akhirah attire so that you are wearing something that dedicated to Allah's service. And if you can to shower before the association. Wash off all of dunya and asking to see yourself in the shower that I'm washing away all of my dunya and that Allah accept my wudu, my qusud to be as if like a, a body that been washed for the grave and to be pure and purified that, Ya Rabbi I'm coming for your zikr, I'm coming for your Divinely Presence. And if we keep the adab of, I'm, I'm coming to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad I'm coming to the presence of Allah then Allah to reward us with that intention. I'm not just coming from work, sit with them for two minutes in my Adidas outfit and I'm full, I eat and, and then that's something else. That's, those are not the people who are trying to strive towards high degrees of reality, inshaAllah. Wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basira surat al-Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, Join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.